Welcome back to the shed everyone. It's the 9th of September, no, 9th of October and I'm just trying to figure out what we're going to plant to over the winter time. So we couldn't plant anything out last week because the weather was so bad with uh, Storm Alex and it virtually rained all weekend. So I'm here in the shed today and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant out some of my uh, broad beans, overwinter broad beans and root trainers uh, to give them a head start. Once they get about six inches tall I'll plant them out in the ground on the plot. It's actual self. These are the ones we're going to be using, the Aquadulce. I can't see if that's backwards on the text or not. But uh, we'll plant these in the root trainers and at the weekend once we clear the bed that I'm going to use for my onions I shall be planting out my garlic. I've got two bulbs of Gemador here, which is a mild flavoured soft neck uh, with violet cloves. It's a French type of garlic. And this is a Nottum sowing garlic. I've also got my onions, which are called Autumn Champion. And I've got 50 sets of these. So these will go out hopefully at the weekend as well. I'm not planting any red onions from sets as these usually go to seed quite quickly in the spring. So what I'll do is around about Christmas time I'll plant out some uh, red onion seeds and trays and try and I've never tried this before but we'll try and grow the onions, the red onions from seed and get them through all the way to next summer without bolting. So welcome back to the plot everyone. It's Saturday morning and it's very sunny. So we're going to crack on and see if we can get quite a lot done today. Um, what I'm going to tackle is, is my corner of shame where all the nettles are. Hopefully get all those uh, cleared out, get them ticked to the tip. Weed the, be uh, weed the bean area and weed the brassica area. Then I can get my onions and my calabries put into the ground. But uh, first things first. Time for a cup of coffee. As you can see, uh, the grass is still growing quite a bit. There's all the bags of all the spent compost from the potatoes. So, the corner that's going to get tackled after my coffee is away up there by just to the left of the greenhouse. So uh, that's what's going to get tackled this morning and hopefully take all the nettles and brambles to the tip f just f before lunchtime and then I'll come back in this afternoon and do a bit of weeding. Well, yesterday what I'd done was I dug out all these brambles and nettles. You can see them all here in this um, big bag. Um, these might, I might take them to the tip, put them in compost bags and take them to the tip or I might just wait until I can have a fire, hopefully they'll dry out and I can have a fire but this is pretty much what the state of the place was like um, way back at the start of summer so um, I think uh, the lesson is, is keep on top of the nettles, don't let them get a foothold and just get rid of them all as soon as you can. There's still a little bit to do, and I've still got to clear this away. Uh, this is used to be the, the black compost bin. Used to be on top of here, and there's some compost here, but this it's always full of rubbish as well. There's nylon string. Uh, previously, I've peeled out four used lipsticks. Things like that. I don't know what she was thinking about putting them in. But that black compost bin there, that black Dalek, you can just see, that was originally here. And I suppose the wire mesh was at the bottom to stop the mice or the rats getting in. Although I've never seen a rat, I've, I've seen plenty of mice. Now, I don't know what's, how much of this chain link wire what I've got here. But that'll come in useful if I decide to make a badger cage to grow sweet corn. 
and this is another area where there was another compost pile as you can see there's the old blood free nylon string that the previous tenant used quite a lot of why she didn't take it out of her force of compost that I'll never know so yeah there was a lot of work done yesterday it just I didn't film it, it's nothing very exciting watching me just hack away at brambles and nettles I also cleared a bit of this this is where I plan to uh, put the garlic and onions today so I've just got to tidy up a little bit and get rid of a few more weeds and get rid of some of this grass here uh, there are still some beans on here which I'm waiting to um, dry out like this these are the Scarlet Emperor runner beans but I'm just waiting for them to um, dry out but they're getting there other things this little bed here, this little covered bed here uh, I weeded this yesterday and uh, I've got some pak choy seedlings back in the shed which uh, will go nicely here this is where all the potatoes were, you can see the holes where I sunk the buckets into the ground but if you have a close look practically every hole had slug eggs in it I don't know if you can see that. So that's slug eggs. And practically every hole had some of these. And you can see some more in this one here. So I think next spring. I'm going to declare war on the slugs and I'm going to get nematodes and put nematodes down. Now this bed here, this is going to get cleaned up as well and I'm going to put the Calabrese broccoli in here. This is the Calabrese broccoli that was savaged by uh, caterpillars in the shed. Kale's still looking okay but the ones down the bottom are a bit holy but We've got a couple of rabbits back home that will gladly eat them. But the, the new stuff coming out is really nice. As you can see, I don't know whether you can see that, there's the white flag. There's always white flag. But yeah, our bunnies back home, they'll have these monkey ones. They'll just happily chomp all the way through them. And uh, this is the heads of the poppies. This is the poppy seed heads from the poppies that grew here. And you can see the little holes. I don't know whether you can. You can see the little holes here at the top of the poppy head seeds for, for the seeds to come out. I'll take one of these and I'll show you. This bed here is going to, which is just down from the beans, I'm going to put my broad beans here. I've got the broad beans in root trainers um, back in the shed. And peas, more and more flowers appearing on the peas. I've actually got pods on the peas as well. So, yeah, it's a nice little winter crop. Okay, let me show you this poppy seed head if I can. Uh, of course the poppy seeds are very, very small. Um, right, I'll see if I can show them on here. So the holes at the top are where the seeds come out. So you just give them a shake. There are your poppy seeds. And uh, actually when the wind blows these things, these all come out. But um, 
Yeah, you can save these and plant them again if you want. There you go, free poppy seeds. I've already saved some, so I don't really need any more. Uh, I've saved some, which I might use in my front garden at home. Um, I've got enough poppies grown up here. But, um, yeah. And, as I showed you previously, I've got the garlic, which is uh, the germador. Which is, hopefully, get that in today. And my 50 sets of Autumn Champion. So we'll see how many we can get in there as well. So I'm going to have this cup of coffee, then I'm going to put my knee pads on, and I'm going to weed out the rest of that area. And uh, get the garlic and onions in. So I'll show you that later. Well, I'm, I'm just going to use this um, hand tiller tool to break up the soil. Um, I've took most of the weeds out. I'm hoping that's going to be enough room for the garlic and the onions. But I'm just going to break the soil up and make it a bit less compact. As you can see, this is breaking up the soil and the clumps in there. It's actually quite a good tool. It's a good tool, but it does. You do need to do a bit of uh, 
work to get it to work properly. It's not, it's not an easy thing to use. To use. That should do it. As you can see, I hope you can see that at the back there's a hole, oscillating hole, which cuts on a forward and backward stroke, and at the front there is uh, these spiky wheels with the spikes bent off to the side, which break up the soil and make it a finer tilt. Okay, so I'm getting things set up now. I've got a guide line in and a measuring board. I'll just show you what the onion sets are like. Now, these are onion sets and what they are is they're mini onions. They're onions grown from seed last year and then they're taken out, kept in a cool place, kept dormant until this year when we plant them in the ground and they'll continue to start growing. Uh, onions are a biannual plant which means they take two years to go from seed to flower head and seed again. So this has gone from seed to a mini onion, it's been taken out of the ground, uh, kept cool and dormant until this year when it's ready to go back in the ground and not grow to an onion and this is a basal plate, this is where the uh, roots will come out and the top end here is where the shoots are going to come out so they go in the ground this way about one centimetre deep and five, sorry one inch deep and five inches apart Okay, so I just had to go back and get my gloves because there's a lot of ants nests here and uh, I react quite badly to ant bites. Now you can go through beforehand and check your onions, remove any any ones that are soft and mouldy, but I'll just inspect them as I'm putting them in the ground uh, and that should be enough. If I come across any that are not suitable, I'll just discard them.
So what I'll do is I'll leave about 12 inches between those. This thing here is about 12 inches long. So I'll just use that as a handed guide. When it comes to the plate with onion sets, there's no correlation between the size of a set and the size of the bulb you're going to get out at the end of the year. Um, even a small bulb will give you a, can give you a small set, can give you a decent enough uh, bulb. What I will do is I'll mark out where the rows are. It might help me stop uh, standing on them. After I get these all in, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll water them just to make sure they've got good contact with the soil. Now these overwintering onions, is, uh, you put them in at this time of the year to grow a good set of roots for the spring. Gives you that little bit of a head start. 
So that's going in. That's how they're all going in. So I'm not going to bore you to death. I'm not going to bore you to death showing you every row. I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Okay, so that's all the onions in. I've had my coffee, so back to work. Um, I've put in the label from the packet just to remind myself what's actually here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give the entire bed a top dressing of these 6x chicken manure pellets. Um, there's a good source of nitrogen for them. So I'll just scatter these on the top. Then what I'll do is I'll water them in and that should be the onions for today. Welcome back to the pot shed everyone. Uh, I was going to show you what I plan to do this afternoon. I'll put the lot, but I don't know whether you can hear that but it's actually just started raining. So I don't know whether I'm going to go up this afternoon or not. It depends whether this rain stops or not. But I'll show you what, uh, just for the end of October uh, roundup of what I've got planned. Well, these are the broad beans that I sowed on the 8th of October. And as you can see, not bad germination. Um, I did try filming this, planting them in the root trainers, but it was at the time when I was having problems with my phone and I lost the video. But this is what they're looking like now. Well, pretty much 100% um, germination. That one there is a little bit slow. And the one behind it, nothing's... Or the two behind it are blank. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. There's more than enough there for, for what I need. I'm not going to plant as many this this year. So, um, yeah, that's the broad beans. Uh, have a look over here. The pak choy that was ravaged by the... the... Uh, caterpillars from the white cabbage whites. They've actually recovered quite well. And I was going to plant them out this afternoon. But... I don't know whether you can see this. It's... It's just raining. The broccoli has also came back quite well. So some of the old leaves that were um, eaten by the caterpillars have come off now. Um, but yes, yeah, some nice new growth on them. So they, uh, they were supposed to be going in the ground today as well. It's been, a, it's been quite a bad weekend uh, weather. For the weekends over the past couple of weeks, I've just had storms coming into the southwest all the time, and uh, yeah, unable to get to the plot. One of the other things I've got planned for is uh, the front garden. We've got an area of a front garden where we've got some plants. So there's a Japanese Asa bush, and there's another bush, and. They're right in front of the living room window, so they're in, really in the wrong place because they grow too big and we have to keep going out and chopping them back down again. So I want to get them removed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put loads of spring bulbs in instead. So I've been out shopping and uh, I'll show you what I've got. So I've got loads of tulips. So here we go, we've got, got purple and black tulips, we have got uh, tall tulip Rembrandt, they are from uh, B&Q, 
these ones are from Otter Nurseries, which is uh, near uh, Ottery St Mary in Devon. And these are Furusima and Angelique. These look rather nice. I'm looking forward to seeing them coming up. And a few more from uh, B&Q. These are uh, the tall lily light type tulip. Um, a few little white and purple crocuses. Uh, some yellow crocuses. And some, or oh, some more from uh, Otter, Otter Nurseries. These are uh, ballerina. So, really, really good. So, not bad. The three from Otter Nurseries were three for a tenner. And the ones from B&Q were two for eight quid and three for seven quid so yeah quite a good deal and these will look really nice when they come up but it doesn't look like I'm going to get any work done this afternoon if this continues um, I'm, I'm afraid I'm a bit of a fair weather gardener I don't see the point of standing out in the pouring rain uh, just to get some stuff done I don't know whether you can see over there um, Well, I'm afraid that's it for another month, um, October. We've got a lot of the beds already prepared for spring and we've got 50 onion sets in the ground. The garlic still's got to go in the ground. I'm thinking about putting the garlic in in front of the, the raspberries. The raspberries are going to get chopped back down to the ground. So I'm thinking about putting the garlic in the front of the bed where the, the raspberries are. Might as well make use of the space while well, nothing else is growing there. Um, the pak choy is going to go up into the little covered brassica bed I've got up near the top of the plot where the potato um, buckets were planted. Uh, and yeah, peas. I've got some peas up at the allotment. Um, there should be some ready for harvesting now, certainly with all the rain we've been having. But I'll keep you updated, uh, this is it for another month, so I'll, yes I'll keep you updated, I'll see if I can do some filming during November, there's not really much to film to be honest, uh, it's just getting the beds all ready for next spring, uh, but we'll see what happens, so um, yeah look after yourself, thanks for watching, and uh, if you like what you've been watching, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, bye everyone.